My name is Pierpaolo Peruzzi and I'm a brain tumor surgeon and a molecular biologist. And I treat patients affected by possibly the worst cancer of all, glioblastoma. The big problem that we face with this tumor is that with very rare exceptions, within a few months after receiving maximal therapy, also including experimental therapies, the tumor invariably comes back. As a result, an excess of 15,000 patients die every year from this disease, just a very short 15 months after the initial diagnosis. We and others have found that this ability of glioblastoma to resist therapies is mediated by a group of proteins which work on the DNA of the cancer cells and, like a switch, activates genetic programs which allow the survival of the tumor and its recurrence. While targeting this response will be a major breakthrough, there are two major problems that make it difficult. The first is that the switch is made up by many proteins, not just one. The second problem is that there is a high degree of redundancy among these proteins, so that if you target one, the others become upregulated and minimize the therapeutic impact, basically recapitulating a molecular whack-a-mole uh, game. Uh, because of this, uh, there is really no good drug options to target this response as a whole. So a major focus of our research has been to look for strategies to overcome this response. We found out that uh, the proteins making up this switch are regulated in nature by a coordinated group of microRNAs, which are tiny, non-coding genes which prevents protein translation. Now, these microRNAs are actually lost in GBM, and that is one of the reasons why uh, this molecular switch is out of control. However, this opens an opportunity, since microRNA are very simple uh, and very small molecules, and these allow a very high degree of freedom in their genetic engineering. MicroRNAs are very peculiar genes, and their main characteristic is their hairpin structure. This shape is crucial because it allows them to be recognized by a specific processing machinery of the cell, which cleaves them into their active form. Taking advantage of this very feature, we have developed methods to engineer RNA sequences which mimic the structure of normal microRNAs, but are in fact made of multiple elements, and when they are processed by cancer cells, they are cut into many different active pieces, each one with a specific function, and each one of them can be used to target the multiple component of this epigenetic switch, or really, uh, anything else that uh, we want to target. As an example, uh, using this strategy, we have designed this RNA where uh, the different components are shown here in different colors. When we give it to tumor cells, the cells are tricked into believing that this is a standard microRNA gene because uh, they recognize the, presen the presence of the hairpin, and so they process it. As a result, this is cleaved not only into several microRNA, shown here as this colored lollipop, but uh, uh, for example, it's also cleaved into another piece, which is here in orange, that works by binding and inactivating a bad microRNA of the tumor. And yet another element in green, uh, which binds to a tumor protein and prevents it from functioning. So, from a single RNA, we can simultaneously upregulate good microRNA, uh, decrease bad microRNAs, and block bad proteins. As a result, uh, as we increase the number of uh, uh, the active pieces which are cut out from our custom-made uh, RNAs, uh, we have a progressively stronger effect uh, against the tumor, as it's shown here in this mouse model of glioblastoma. So when we use this strategy to block the resistance switch, uh, the tumor becomes significantly more sensitive to chemotherapy. As you can see here, uh, chemotherapy alone adds very little uh, to the survival in mice with, with glioblastoma, which is uh, uh, depicted here in this uh, black dotted line. And this is also very similar to what we see in real patients. However, when we pretreat with our RNA, uh, we amplify this response uh, several folds. As we are developing this technology towards the clinics, uh, 
a major goal is to optimize delivery. Uh, because of the small size of these synthetic RNA genes, we can resort to vectors commonly used for any gene therapy application. For example, we have successfully validated uh, these with uh, AAV vectors, which were directly injected into the brain tumors in mice and uh, resulted in more than doubling of survival. And then of note, uh, uh, this was achieved without any other additional therapy. Another option that we are currently working on is the delivery of the microRNA pieces via extracellular vesicles, which can be produced in the lab and then administered systemically uh, via an IV injection. These delivery vesicles uh, can be specifically targeted uh, to the tumor to maximize selectivity and also to minimize impact to other organs while allowing multiple administrations. So uh, to conclude, uh, we provide a novel plug and play uh, modular platform uh, based on the structure of microRNA genes, um, where the active components can be chosen, so to say, a la carte, uh, depending on the specific targets and disease of interest. And this is very appealing for a situation where there, there are no valid drug options. Um, importantly, this approach remains complementary uh, to other mainstream therapies like chemotherapy, and in fact, it amplifies their effect. It is also important to point out that we have chosen to target this survival switch in brain cancer because for people like me who work uh, with neuro-oncology patients, this is probably the ultimate frontier to achieve a, a significant uh, uh, therapeutic impact. However, this technology is virtually applicable to any other cancers uh, or diseases characterized by more than one actionable targets. For example, neurodegenerative or uh, uh, immunogen uh, inflammatory diseases. As I mentioned, the platform is ready to go and uh, the delivery methods are in the making. So we expect this to be ready for clinics within the next two to three years. Thank you.